Welcome to the celebration of Holy Mass here at St. Luke Catholic Church. Today is the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you wish to support our parish financially, please go to www.stlukechurchssj.org slash donate. You can also mail a donation to the church or in-person drop off. Thank you for your continued support to our parish. May God reward you abundantly. Our celebrant today is Father Cornelius, and he will be assisted by Deacon Walker. Let us now quiet ourselves as we welcome the Lord who is in our midst today. that we have carried for years and decades, months, days. We've come not to hold back in giving our life and our love to the Lord, withholding absolutely nothing. That the Lord who knows how we hurt, though the Lord who knows our pain, though the Lord who knows our inability to forgive, will purify our heart desires this morning. 
But it can only happen if we withhold nothing from the Lord. And so on this day that the church calls us to forgive from our heart, let us not withhold the forgiveness of our brothers and sisters, for we ourselves have received unlimited forgiveness from our God. And so with that, let us begin our celebration on this 24th Sunday in ordinary time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning to you, my sisters and brothers. And so as we have gathered around the table of the Lord's sacrifice, withholding nothing from the Lord, so now let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery worldly by calling to mind our sins, by remembering the many times that we have failed to forgive those who have trespassed against us. Let us ask God to be merciful on us and to grant us peace. everlasting. Amen. Amen. Together let us say glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone at the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, Creator, and ruler of all things. 
and that we may feel the walking of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the Word of God. A reading from the book of Sirach, chapter 27, verses 30 and 28 to 7. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then, when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like like himself, can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich and
according to our sins does he deal with us nor does he requite us according to our crimes the lord is kind and merciful slow to anger and rich in compassion the lord is kind and merciful slow to anger and rich in compassion or as the heavens are high above surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him as far as the east is from the west so far has he put our transgressions from us the lord is kind and merciful slow to anger and rich in St. Paul to the Romans, Romans 14, verse 7 through 9. Brothers and sisters, none of us live for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? 
as many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, the servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from the heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, church. Our God is good all the time. Yes, God is indeed good to us. We can't take that for granted. Amen? We can never, ever take it for granted, the goodness of God in our lives. We've just said that God is good all the time, and so he is. But the God who is good is calling on each and every one of us today to forgive one another from our heart. Not just to forgive, but to forgive from the heart. Because to forgive from the heart is indeed divine. You've heard that saying, to err is human. But to forgive from the heart is divine. I got to add that from the heart because, you know, sometimes we claim to forgive people, but it goes only from the lips and doesn't even go through our throat. That's where it ends. But we have to get to our heart. Why are we called today to forgive? Why is the church asking us to embrace forgiveness today? Well, the first reading taken from the book of Sirach, Chapter 27, I know some people, you have Bible that don't have Sirach, right? If you don't see Sirach, there's another name you will see, right? What is it? Ecclesiasticus, yes. That's for the old school. Though, if you know Ecclesiasticus, then you know the Bible, amen? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You know the Bible if you only know Sirach. But that's the old school name that we used to call this book, Ecclesiasticus. 
But Ben Sirach, as we know it today, writes to us to give us an opportunity for us to reflect in our lives. Sirach tells us that wrath and anger, they are hateful things. Wrath and anger are both hateful things. Yet, the sinners hug them close. You know, in the morning at the first mass, I was asking folks, give me an example of the things that you hug, the things that you bring close to your heart. You know, like family, like some people love their job so much that it's close to their heart. You know, some people love their pets. And there's so many things we love, and we have them close to our heart. But Ben Sirach is saying to us, do you know that vengefulness, anger, wrath, resentment, that they are harmful and hateful and hurtful, but yet... We don't mind having them close to our heart. When we have them close to our heart, there's no room for God. And so, because we have them close to our heart, Sirach is telling us, we must forgive our neighbors the injustice that they have done. Whatever it is that they have done to us, we must learn to forgive. And then he adds this. This is the kicker. He says, that when you refuse to forgive, he says, could anyone nourish anger at one another, right? Could you nourish? He, see the word, he used the word nourish. You know, when you nourish something, you are, you are giving them nutrients. You are giving them ability to live. You are giving them ability to take shape. When you nourish something, you are giving them life. And so he's saying, could any one of us nourish anger and resentment, you know, from one another, and then we expect healing from the Lord. Can you nourish anger, and then you are still expecting God to heal you? Is it possible? No, because there's no room for God. You have been holding on to the anger you had from your ex 60 years ago. You can't let it go, right? You're holding on to the hurt of your sister four years ago. We hold them so much and there's no room for God. Could anyone refuse mercy to one another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If you refuse to have mercy on other people, are you really seriously going to ask to be forgiven? But we do this. This is what we do. This is our lives. It's not just what is in the word of the Lord thousands of years ago. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, this is who we are. We're so angry about something. We're so angry towards so many people that we, we don't have the ability to let it go anymore. We don't want to let go. Not because we don't have the abilities, but we simply don't want to. I took the liberty to... Find the meaning of the word anger. And the reason I do this is because sometimes there, we can confuse the different forms of anger that exist. There are what we call the deadly sin of anger, and there's also the righteous anger. Let me give you the difference. The deadly sin of anger is defined as a, a passion for revenge. A passion for revenge that goes beyond the control of the reason. You are so angry that your, your, your brain is no longer telling you that you got to let this go. A passion. And not only that you're not going to, you are looking, actively seeking to revenge. That's what the deadly sin of anger is. But then there is another kind of anger. And it's called righteous anger. And it's defined as the passion to set something right. So you see the difference? The deadly sin of anger, the righteous anger. And I'm bringing this up because look at what happened and what still happens in our streets. So many of our youth, uh, young people are righteously angry. 
Because they think, and we believe with them that things need to be set right. There is a lot of police brutality. There is hatred. There is racism in our society. You know, if you have certain color of the skin and then you go to apply for a job, you may not get it. Not because you're not qualified, but simply because of how you look. Even amongst ourselves, black folks, we discriminate against one another. You know, those who were born here and those who were not born here. Yes, I say it. You know, those who migrated here and those who had their origin from those who were enslaved here. There's so much division. And so when people take to the streets and calling for a change in racism, not only from other folks, but racism within our own culture, within our own black folks, when people take the streets and they are calling for a change, they are participating in what we call righteous anger. They have a passion to set things right. Now, don't confuse them with those who break into people's stores. Because that's what your politicians do. They want, to, they want to merge them together. They're not together. We know. We're not fools. We're not stupid. We know those who truly protest. And we know those who are looking for a way to destroy. They become to us the agents of the devil who have come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Amen? Amen. So if you know anyone... Any kid who engages in violence, whether it be violence in our neighborhood, killing one another, right? Shooting one another. We know them. They have guns. We know they bring guns into our house, but we don't want to speak because we are afraid of dying, right? If you know them, remind them that they are simply leaving themselves to become agents of the devil. And the modus operandi of the devil is simply to kill to steal, and to destroy. So we ourselves, when we engage in killing, whether killing by word of our mouth, because some people don't kill multitude by what they have said, right? Or by gun, or by knife, or by whatever. When we engage in that, we become agents of the devil to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Those people are not those we include in those who are righteously angry. I know I am. I'm angry with our church. Tell them I said so. Do I look frustrated? Yes. Tell them I said I'm angry with our archdiocese. Sometimes I'm even angry with myself. Right? But hopefully they are righteous anger. Amen? <laughs> but we are called to possess that kind of anger. Righteous anger, not a passion to revenge. Because vengeance is mine, says who? Lord. Says the Lord. Yeah. Says the Lord. And that's why Ben Sirach is asking us today, can you seriously, could someone seriously nourish anger, marinate anger, put some salt and pepper in anger, and expect that God will heal them? No. In other words, for us to be healed of our anger, we have to make ourselves available to God. We are angry. When we get so angry with ourselves and with our brothers and sisters, it chokes us up. It makes us feel uneasy. Have you been so angry that you almost can't breathe? I told them in the morning at the earlier mass, you know, do you know that there is a link between anger and heart disease? People don't, they don't know that being unnecessarily angry towards a situation and not letting it go can actually result in some heart conditions. We can physically harm ourselves. We can cripple our emotions. We can cripple even our psychological self by unnecessarily being angry. But we know there's always a good news. Somebody say amen. amen. And the good news is this. Psalm 103, the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. That's the good news, y'all. 
The Lord is kind and merciful. Every time you feel so angry that you want to kill someone by your words or your action, remember Psalm 103. God, who had given you life, that God is kind and merciful. He's so slow. God is so slow. You know, so slow to get angry. Because if he's not slow to get angry, some of us will not be alive today. Amen. Because the Bible tells us that if the Lord marks our iniquities, who can survive? If, if the Lord marks our iniquities, who can survive? None of us. I know you look cute today, you look all oh, your nice dress. But if the Lord counted even what we did yesterday or what we failed to do yesterday, amen. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Sin is not always what we do. Sin, that's something that you know, we have to remind Catholics about. Sin is not always something we do. Because sometimes when, as a priest, when you go to the confessional, all you hear is what I did. Oh, Father, I did this, I did this, I did this. Mm -hmm. What did you not do? Did you forget to pray? Sin is not always often what we do. Sin is also what we fail to do. And that's what we are called to do. So now that we know that God is kind and merciful, he's slow to anger, rich in compassion. How? How can we live a life of forgiveness? How can we become slow to anger and rich in compassion? Isn't that why we were created in the image after the likeness of God? So that we can be like God? How? The answer is simple. We can because we know that to forgive from our heart makes us divine, makes us be like God. So forgiveness is the answer. I said this earlier, and I know some people will roll their eyes at me. Okay, here we go again. Another sermon on forgiveness. But you give me an answer. What else? How else can we become like God? If not, when we display an unlimited level of forgiveness. When we are slow to anger and rich in compassion. When we understand that to forgive from the heart makes us divine. That's why Jesus had an encounter with his disciples in the gospel today. And Peter approached Jesus. And Peter wanted to justify himself. You know, sometimes when we know something, we try to justify ourselves. So Peter wanted to justify himself. So he approached Jesus. Because some of the other disciples have been making him angry. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, Peter was a hot-tempered man, right? And so a lot of things have made him so angry. So he approached Jesus. And he said to Jesus in the gospel today, uh, Lord, uh, if my brother, supposing, you know, when we start telling lies, we say another person, if my brother were to offend me, how many times am I supposed to forgive him? Good question, right? Now Peter went on to give an answer to the question that he asked. In other words, you know the answer, but you want to give, ask the question anyway. But he gave his own version of the answer. Peter said, Seven times? Now, where did Peter get seven times from? It's not in the Jewish tradition. Peter was a Jew. So where did he get seven times from? Because that's not what the Jewish tradition teaches. In the olden days, in the time of Moses, what did the old tradition teach? An eye for an eye. If you offend me once, I deal with you. That was the old tradition. Eventually, the tradition evolved, and they upgraded that tradition of an eye for an eye. And then when you read Amos chapter 1 from verse 3 to 13, Amos 1, 3 to 13, God will forgive the enemy of Israel three times before he will deal with them, right? So with that, the people of Israel started the act of forgiving three times. Because God did it, so we, this is the new, this is the upgrade. 
instead of an eye for an eye, now is if somebody offends you three times. So that's where they got the baseball analogy, right? Three strikes and you are out. Forgive me once, I'm going to write it down on the date. The second time, okay, I'm going to upgrade my date. The third time, uh uh, I'm not going back to the book. Three times, you are out. That's the Jewish tradition. Three strikes and you're out. If you offend me three times, that's it. But I can't understand where Peter got seven times. But he did it in order to show Jesus that he was a merciful man. So Peter upgraded even further from the Jewish tradition from three to seven to let Jesus know that he, you know, I don't read the scriptures. I, I don't follow you for three years, so I know what you want. Seven times. You, I can't go wrong, Jesus, right? I can't go wrong. If somebody offends me, I got seven times to, for, to uh, forgive them. But Jesus looked him, as he would look to us lovingly. Jesus said to Simon Peter, uh -uh. not seven times, but 77 times. You all know that seven is already perfect, right? But can you imagine 77 times? Some traditions, when you read some parts, they would say 77 times, seven times, right? You've read that, right? And if you multiply that, that gives you 490 times. So you got 490 times in a day to forgive someone. Amen? Do you know anybody in your life who will offend you 490 times? You know what? I take that back. I know somebody. I know a couple of <laughs> I know somebody who, who will really, really want to get back at you. For, you know, they don't mind doing it 500 times in a day. But, but, but the message here is that Jesus is saying to you and I, your level of forgiveness should be unlimited. I know you all have cell phones. Don't you love when your cell phone is unlimited and you still have to pay a few amount? So that's the mentality that Jesus is giving us today. Your ability to forgive should be unlimited. In the tradition of the Jewish people, they're not going to sit down and count 77 times. N nobody has time for that. And nobody got time for that. But the Lord is using that to remind us your forgiveness must be unlimited. You have to forgive from your heart. And then he went on to tell them the story of the, the, the man who has a business and wanted to set an account. Forgives the first guy who came. And then the guy leaves his presence and rather than forgive the other servant, chokes him up and say, pay me. Otherwise, I'm going to kill you. And yet the person is owing them a much smaller amount. Are we not owing God a much smaller amount? We don't want to forgive. And yet, we will be the first to say, our Father, yes, we know you are in heaven. That's the new version. Yes, we know you are in heaven. Yeah, we hail you. Hello is your name. Well, we know your kingdom will come on earth, if you like, but I'm asking you to give me today. Give me all I want. My daily breads. Forgive me my trespasses and lead me not into temptation. Amen. Isn't that the version of the last prayer we pray? Sometimes. We don't always add the other part. Forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those who have trespassed against me. But that's the real version, and that's what God is asking us to do today, to forgive. Because forgiveness and the forgiving of our, our enemies, you know, can drive people crazy. If there's any, if there's any reason why you need to forgive, it, it, it's, it can drive people crazy. When people think that you're going to be vengeful and you're going to fight back, and you say, you know what, I'll forgive you. I'm going to give you a hug, but let it go. And so how, what do we do in our lives? How do we try to embrace the forgiven spirit that the church offers us today? 
I think the first thing we need to do, the first thing we need to do is to stop hugging rats and anger and dissentment. Stop hugging it. Because whatever is put in your heart is close to the heart. That's why we call, we say home is where the heart is. So if your home is an angry home, a resentful home, a home filled with pain, then there's something wrong. Stop holding on to wrath and anger. Stop hugging them. Forgive quickly. Forgive quickly. Don't, don't let it pile up. I told them at the early mass today, I said, some of us act like we are computers. You know, whatever you put in computer remains in the hard drive. Whatever somebody did to you six years ago, 20 years ago, remain in your hard drive. You don't erase them. But we need to erase them. We need to click delete. We need to delete them. So stop hugging on to anger. Stop hugging on to anger. Forgive quickly. Don't let it keep piling up. For the more it piles up, the more difficult it is for us to sort it out. Did you catch that? The more we pile up things, the more it's harder for us to be able to sort things out. The second thing we need to do is to stop criticizing others if we are not going to be a solution. Let me put it in another way. Stop being a problem if you're not going to be a solution. Or rather, if you're not going to be a solution, don't be a problem. You know, some people, they want to uh, uh, find a way to forgive, and then you come into the picture. Oh, you mean she did this to you? I can't believe she did this to you. And you want to forgive them? Really? I mean, if, 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 if she had done it to me, you know, I, I'm not even going to talk to her. I'm not even going to. No. Stop being a problem. Be a solution. Don't, don't increase the pain that others are feeling. Rather, help them alleviate that pain. Number three, we have to learn to forgive those who are unforgivable. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because forgiveness releases God's grace upon us. And resentment leaves us in bondage. Forgive the unforgivable because forgiveness releases. When you forgive, you release. It's like a resentment is like a bile in our heart. Until that bile fades away, melts away, we, we, we are in the. Have you ever had gas? Mm -hmm. And it's almost time to sleep. It makes you uncomfortable. That's what anger and hurt is in our soul. It's like gas. It keeps us uncomfortable. So forgive even those who are unforgivable. Trust me, there are people who have made themselves unforgivable. Because the more you try to forgive them, the more they do even worse. But the Bible is saying to us today, forgive those who are even unforgivable. Because when you forgive, it releases God's grace upon you. And resentment leaves us into bondage. I also want us to learn this lesson today. That an unforgiven spirit not only affects you personally, but it affects your family, your friends, and those you love. When you are resentful, you are not only doing it to yourself, you are also doing it to the people who love you. Because your actions will speak louder than your words. And finally, and this is the key for today's scriptures. Because I, I have come to understand that we all have made a mistake of what forgiveness means. And so this number five lesson tells us, forgiveness is not a feeling. 
Forgiveness is not an e emotion. Somebody repeat this with me. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is not emotion. You know what forgiveness is? Forgiveness is an act of the will. It's not something you sleep and gloss over. Forgiveness is an act of the will. Act of the will is defined as what? As a knowing choice. It is an exercise of free will based on knowledge. Based on knowledge and intellect. So when you fail to forgive, it has nothing to do with your feeling. Oh, Father, I will forgive when I feel like. No, dear. It has nothing to do with your feelings. It's an act of the will. In other words, we are conscious of it. And not only that we are conscious of it, we have power over it. That's why today is given to us a choice. A choice to continue to hug anger and resentment or a choice to embrace God. Anna Lamotte has this to say about forgiveness. And it's so funny. He says, not forgiving someone is like drinking rat poison and expecting the rat to die. When we fail to forgive, it's like someone drinking rat poison and, and you're expecting that rat to die. When we hold on to anger and rot, we're not doing it to the other person. We're doing it to ourselves. And when we forgive, we're not also doing it for the person alone. We are doing it to ourselves. Forgiveness is like a, a, a chain that is broken when hurt is released. And that's why I'd like to end by giving us an exercise this morning. An exercise for... For all of us, all of us Christians to participate in, that exercise is this. Look for one person in your life. I know we all have a list of those that, you know, trust me, you do. I know you do have a long list of those that you have offended and on the other side of those that you have offended. But I'm only asking you to do this one thing. Today, look for one person. Reflect on it. Ask God to reveal to you one person that needs your forgiveness. You go to the person. Now, maybe not physically because of COVID-19. But you call the person or you know, do something. Because it, we have come to understand that forgiveness is not an emotion. It has nothing to do with the feelings. It is our action. It is our personal act, an act of the will. So now I'm, I'm, I'm challenging each and every one of us to put our act of the will into practice today. Seek out someone and offer them forgiveness. Don't tell me, oh, they have to come to you. Or, no. Seek out someone and tell them, today, this Forgiveness Sunday, i like for us to mend fences because I am done hugging hate I am done hugging resentment I am tired of being angry at you that's all that I'm asking you to do today now some of us will be successful a whole lot of us may not be successful. But what do you count as success? Is it the other person accepting your apologies and accepting your, your hand of fellowship? If you do, then you have just missed the point when I said forgiveness is not for the other person alone. It's for you. Offer them forgiveness because you want to break this chain of heart. You want to break this chain of anger because you want to forgive them from your heart so that you can let go of the past 
and be free enough and be open enough and be willing enough to embrace the Lord. That's all I'm asking you today, today. Forgive from the heart. For if you do, you now resemble God who has forgiven you in Christ. And the reason you need to do it today is because tomorrow is what? The exaltation of the cross. I bet some of you all done forgot. Tomorrow is the celebration of the exaltation of the cross. What does the cross symbolize? Tete laste. The cross tells us it is finished. What is finished? All. Everything. It is finished in Christ Jesus. Do it today so that you can prepare yourselves adequately to celebrate the glory of the cross. Jesus Christ himself who came and died for your sins and for mine. Together, let us profess our faith in God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate today the wonderful gift of God's forgiveness in our lives, let us pray for the grace that we may no longer hold on to hurt and anger, but embrace joy and reconciliation and peace that comes from God. Our response today is, Forgiven Lord, hear our prayers. Forgiven Lord, hear our prayers. We pray with confidence that our loving Father forgive us our many transgressions for which we are truly sorry, and give us the strength to live our lives in closer accord with his commandments. We pray to the Lord. Forgiven Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for those who have offended by thought, word, or deed, and who have shown Christian charity in forgiving and forgetting our transgressions. We pray to the Lord. Forgiven Lord, Lord, 
hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of crime, that they find consolation in the words of Christ, and that they learn to forgive those who may have gravely affected their lives. We pray to the Lord. Forgive him, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for greater debt relief among the countries of the world, and that there be a greater sharing among God's peoples of the rich bounty he has bestowed upon us. We pray to the Lord. Forgiving, forgiving Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who are sick, both at home and in the hospital, that our loving and caring Father look down on them with compassion and give them relief from their illness and that the dead may rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Forgiving Lord, hear our prayers. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. As we open up our hearts to the Lord, let us remember those that we need to forgive. Especially for those that have been hurt by our church through the child sex abuse and those who still carry a lot of hurt in their heart. Let us pray for them today. That the grace of God will aid them to be healed of this pain. Let us pray for those that we ourselves have hurt. Those we know and those we are unaware of the many hurts that we have caused them. Pray for them that they may be healed of this pain. Ask God to, to unveil for them his will. That they may have the strength to let go and let God. For we cannot hold on to hurt and try to hold on to the Lord at the same time. Lord, you ask us to seek forgiveness today, for tomorrow is not guaranteed. Give us the grace that comes from you alone. Give us the peace that is beyond all human understanding. Give us the joy that is our strength. That we may indeed seek forgiveness and offer forgiveness from our heart. That at the end of our lives, we too will come and join you in that heavenly kingdom where you have prepared for all your good and faithful servants. Please grant this, Lord, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the offer.
sisters and brothers that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplication O Lord and in your kindness accept these your servants offerings that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man. And when he was justly condemned in mercy, you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth, full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. And when we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating this reconciliation Christ brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessings, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us the pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son. And in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. With Francis, our Pope. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, St. Luke, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace. I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now bow to one another in a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. But only say the word, and my soul shall. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
The chalice of blessing that we bless is a communion in the blood of Christ. And the bread that we break is a sharing in the body of the Lord. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our mind and bodies so that its effect, not our own desires, may always prevail in us. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated for just a few minutes. Once again, we want to uh, use this moment to remind all of us, especially those who will live here in the District of Columbia, to please uh, ensure that your family has been counted, that you participate in uh, the Census 2020. You can do so by simply going to uh, census2020.gov, and um, you'll be counted. In Maryland, please do the same. And another civic responsibility that we have coming up in a couple of uh, weeks now, less than 60 days, is that we are all reminded that as Catholics, we must participate in the voting. We must vote. There is no sitting on the fence. You know, if you are eligible, if you are a citizen, if you are at least 18 years of age, you must vote. And to help you, you have please go to vote.org and uh, you can either request absentee ballots or register to vote. You know, you have to be registered in order to vote. Don't just show up there on that day and thinking everything will go smooth. So let's do it. It takes only two minutes to register to vote in November. And uh, you can also apply for absentee ballots. And if you receive them, you know, vote and send them in as soon as possible because we are not sure what they are doing in the post office anymore. They are taking the joy out of post, I'm sorry, did I say the joy? And I'm only saying I might be in trouble. But hey, that's my life. I meant they are taking the joy of going to post office. I didn't mention anybody's name. I'm saying they are taking the joy out of you going to post office and receiving your mail. If it's somebody's name, so be it. So please uh, ensure uh, that you vote on time. Uh, in our bulletin, we have so many ways for you to uh, get registered as soon as possible. And we will keep running these ad, uh, information on our uh, parish website as well as our bulletin and our Facebook page so that you know it is your responsibility. Now, somebody posed a question. I know some of you heard the question yesterday about who to vote for. That's not my job. I, I'm not here to tell you who to vote for. But I also know that there have been people who have been deceptive, be it priests, bishops, whoever. They have been deceptive. They have been telling us half truth. In fact, they have been telling us who to vote for. It's not going to be my job. But this Wednesday, if you care to join, this Wednesday I'm going to spend part of the Bible study to explain what our Catholic social teachings are all about. It may get me in trouble, I'm telling you ahead of time, but I know the truth will always set you free. And if, if I bear the consequences, so be it. But on Wednesday, during Bible study, with scripture at, at, at the back, I'm going to explain to us the seven Catholic social teachings. And after you have heard the seven Catholic social teachings, you now go home and make your choice on who to vote for. But as for me, I can't tell you who to vote for. You know why? Because there's no candidate that is perfect. Amen. Those celebrating their birthdays, 
uh, this weekend. Uh, Ms. Sunday Glover Cox, uh, Renee Bowser, Doreen Mahoney, Diane P. Taylor, Massa Patterson, Candice Williams, Marie Bende, and Juliet Ross. Any of you here? Hi. Well, we're happy uh, birthday to all of you. And to Keith and Colithia Quals, we wish you a happy in anniversary. Amen? Amen. Amen. But before we dismiss for the day, just uh, this is opportunity again to to thank you all for your generosity towards your parish and to, uh, to ask that we will continue to keep your church in your prayers. Uh, keep your church when you receive your, your check. Also, keep your church in your will, right? It's not too hard to say. Remember your church. But that's how the church can survive. We don't, have, we don't produce anything so that we can be having returns. But we simply serve you and you serve God with your resources, with your strength, with your time, and your talent. And in order for us to serve God effectively, we have to lose hurt. Lose it. Let it go. Let the pain go. And embrace forgiveness. Because to forgive from your heart is divine. And when you forgive people, you are not doing it for yourself alone. You're doing it for your family. And also remember that forgiveness got nothing to do with emotions. It's not an emotion, emotional thing. Forgiveness has nothing to do with your feelings. Yes, your feelings may be hurt. Don't we hurt God's feelings every single day? It got nothing to do with feelings. It is an act of the will. In other words, we intentionally decide to forgive or not to forgive. But I know from personal experience that the more you forgive, the lighter you become. Whatever that means to us. Before we dismiss, uh, we have to ask, we'll ask you to join me as we say a farewell prayer for our brother Elliot as he leaves. This is his last Sunday with us and he'll be going to uh, California and we are praying for you and we that you will be successful in your life's pursuit as you go to the city. Don't go close to where the fire burns, right? Yeah. No. But we pray for you. Uh, we're going to miss you. We're sad to see you go, but we're happy. Whenever people get a promotion or try to begin life, you know, we're happy that uh, hopefully you will begin a family and enjoy the, the bounties of Allah. So help me as, you, as we stand and we ask upon him. Good and merciful God, we thank you for your son as he has served your church, assisting us in the music that lifts us up to you, our God. We ask that you may guide him in his new endeavor in California. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of his family and friends. We ask that you may go with him and lead him, that you may go beside him and assist him, especially when times are hard, and that you may go behind him and defend him from the powers of the enemies. And may no weapon fashioned against you prosper. May God grant success to the works of your hands. And may he keep you safe and bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May God let his face shine upon you and show you his mercies. Amen. Amen. May the Lord who has given us the gift of forgiveness, may he grant us the grace to use that gift that we may forgive, knowing that it is in giving that we receive and it is in forgiving that we ourselves receive forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Now may Almighty God bless you and reward you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel by your life. Thanks be to God. And stay safe, everyone. God bless you. I just want to pray.
Bye.